Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Spring has arrived at the art cottage and it's been a busy time both in the studio but also in the garden. So for those of you who are new around here, Richie and I purchased a property for our art business during the winter. So this is the first time that we've actually seen the outside space come to life in all its glory. So it's been wonderful to witness but there's also been a lot to do. So we've been quite busy outside figuring out how to set up the watering systems, weeding, making sure the paths are clear and just taking time to admire and take in everything that's happening as far as what's growing and all the insects and things that are very busy in the garden. I've also been quite busy in my studio as well and I often find that my energy levels mirror the seasons. So a few months back when it was winter I was feeling a little bit sluggish as far as creativity but now that spring has arrived and there's so much inspiration around me especially as I am a nature-inspired artist and often bring botanical shapes and nature-based colours into my work, suddenly I feel like I have so many ideas that I want to explore. But I'm also having to balance that with the other jobs that come with a property like this. So we've been feeding the birds, picking fruit, and also just taking some time to enjoy what's happening. And I often find when I'm in my studio that I spend quite a bit of time looking out at the garden and observing. This looks really yummy. If I was a bird, I would want to come and snack here. It's also in a nice shady part of the garden. So I read on the back of the packet that if you want to encourage birds that you should remove the husks as they eat and then restock. So judging by how much is in this bag, I'll certainly be able to do that. So we'll see, we'll see if we get some birdies on there. And because I don't have a comfy chair yet in my studio, I took a bit of time recently to get some cushions and make the chair outside a little bit more cozy. And it's actually in a beautiful spot under the veranda. So I'm hoping to use that either for sketching, reading, or just taking a little break throughout the day. The cushions will also hide the little rips that are in the, in the base there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you should see the one on the other side. There's a huge rip because I turned it over thinking that maybe the other side would be better, but that's got a huge rip on it too. If I was handy with a sewing machine, I could just whip up a new uh, cover for that cushion. Another thing that we've been thinking about is whether or not to get some studio chickens, but I'm not 100% sure about that just yet. So I didn't actually realise how big this chicken coop is until I came in here the other day. And I'd actually really love to get some chickens, but of course they are our responsibility. We're not here full time. We don't live here. This is just our studio. So I'm just sort of thinking about it before I jump in. But there's actually a lot of weeds in here. So I do need to tidy it up and clear it out and then decide what to do with it. So I've just come in from the garden and it's actually getting really hot out there. It's amazing how hot it gets here in spring. So I've come inside and I have a little job that I've been wanting to do for a couple of months now. I have quite a lot of artwork that I've collected from artists that I love and I want to get some of it framed up and put around our office space here and also in my studio. So I've got a bit of my own art up but I also love having all sorts of other styles of art and types of art around me and I especially love birds and nature and so these little paintings I might even put them in the kitchen area because I quite often just look out of the window in the kitchen and just watch the birds as they hop around and fly through the garden. So what I'm going to do now is open up the frames which I ordered and get these framed up and decide where I want to put them. And then that will be one little job that I can tick off my quite long studio to-do list. So you might be wondering if I've been doing any painting and I can tell you that I have been flitting between all sorts of different art projects. I was hoping that I would find a little bit more focus this month but it must be the spring energy because I have too many ideas and too many things that I want to try out. 
One of the things that I have been experimenting with and absolutely loving is a needle tip applicator. Now I have seen these all over the place and I just hadn't felt the urge to try one until recently and I'd always thought that they'd probably just clog and wouldn't be all that effective. But once I started using one of these, I couldn't believe it. They're so fun and you can do so many different types of marks and techniques with them. So I've been using a few different types of paint in the applicator, but they've all been fluid paints. So I've tried out using acrylic ink, high flow acrylic and fluid acrylic. Sometimes the fluid acrylic is a little bit thick and in that case, I'll just add a bit of water to get a nice consistency because once you have a good consistency, you can get a great run of marks. So you can just keep on going, which I absolutely love because sometimes I would do similar marks to this using a paint pen and my pen would get stuck and clogged and it would just slow everything down. But I'm finding with these applicators, I can get a good rhythm with my mark making. And I've been trying out all sorts of different types of mark making. Here you can see I've outlined a leaf shape, I've got dots, scribbles, um, what else can I tell you? So over here is really interesting because I discovered a technique that I absolutely love. What I've been doing is laying down marks with the applicator and then going over the top with a brayer. And what I find is that it gives a completely different kind of line and you get a lot of thick and thin areas. So that's a great way to use the tool, but to get a different result. And you can see here, I've also used the brayer to get these mottled dots. And over here, I used the brayer just to soften these dots. They were a little bit more rounded initially. Actually, I brayed over the top. I think I got quite into the brayer technique and started adding that over the top. In this one that I have in my hands, you can see that I've started experimenting with botanicals as well. So there's a lot of different ways that you can make marks. And now that I have these pieces with quite a lot of fine detail on them, I will come over the top in another layer and bring back some bigger shapes, cover up some of the marks. That's the way that I usually approach my acrylic paintings. I add stuff in, then I calm it down, add more in and just keep experimenting. So since I've moved into this studio and I've had these canvases hanging up in, on the wall where I can see them, I've been treating them a little bit like sketchbook pages and I just grab one when I have a little burst of time, bring it over to my table, add a bit of detail to it and then put it back. And in that way they continue to evolve over time. So there's no rush with them. So these pieces may be, remain experimental pieces for quite a long time. They're a place where I can try out different tools, different ideas that I have. And because I'm working in that way with many layers, they are going to get a beautiful surface to them. And you can already see that on some of these pieces that there is amazing texture. I tried out applying some of the jelly um, plate prints that I did. So there's collage elements in there. There's some really nice scratchy textures. And so with these, these pieces, I'm really interested to see what comes through when I'm not thinking so hard. So that's been a lovely thing about setting them up in this way. I can just work on them in little bursts without feeling any pressure to complete them. So I've got the air conditioner in and that's making a big difference. The vine is growing outside and that's certainly helping, but I still do have quite a bit of sunlight coming into the studio. And I just need to be careful with my art supplies because if you have paints that are lying out in the sun, they will dry up really quick. But it's great if you have trolleys because I have been able to just pull my trolleys and I generally leave them around this sink area because this is always in the shade. And I've also moved my tray. I have a tray which is full of pencils, pens, and all sorts of mark making tools and supplies that I use. And I've just popped it up there because it just makes sure that it's not in the sun. I did have it over on this bench, but that was getting a little bit too much sunlight. Although the light is changing all the time, every day, <laughs> and I'm never quite sure. As soon as I think I've found a spot which is out of the sun, the sun shifts. But generally I think it's getting better and there's getting there's less sun coming in and things are getting 
more comfortable and I'm figuring out the space. So I've moved my paints out of the sun and I might end up needing to move some of these plants as well because they're getting a lot of sun. But I did notice that there is this gorgeous brand new leaf. It's like a little baby coming through. And over on my other plant near my uh, table, there's also a couple of new leaves. So you definitely know that it's spring because everything is growing. So you might have noticed that this painting hasn't changed too much. I've actually got a little bit stuck. I'm not quite sure whether I want to cover up this botanical and take it in a completely abstract direction or add in more botanicals a bit similar to the paintings that are in this corner and make it more of a botanical painting. There are some parts of this painting that I'm really liking some beautiful colours and textures and usually that's the problem when you start liking parts of the painting you can become paralysed. What I'm thinking is because I haven't done a lot of big painting in quite a long time I might just put this one aside and start another one because I often find that I work better when I have a few pieces to work on and just having one canvas on the go is leading me to that place of stuckness. And you can see from the ones behind me, it's not generally the way that I work. I like to have a few that I can bounce between. So hopefully in an upcoming video, I'll have a different canvas on the easel and I'll find a better flow with my big canvas pieces. So on this one, I want to add some mark making and then use the brayer to get that softened mark and the thick and thin line work that I was talking about. I love the sort of scratchy noise that this needle tip applicator makes. Might go a bit bigger. So once you have your paint down, you might love the line like that, or you can grab a brayer and go over the top of the line and it will just change the, the look of the line and, and make it thick and thin and a different kind of shape. There's actually quite a lot of ink came out so you can see it's it's blocked in an area but that's okay too because you can just keep on experimenting to get different kind of effects. So I'm just going to do a little bit more so I get a little bit more broken up line here. So you can see that's a lot more subtle and you've got some on the brayer now as well. So if you wanted to you could get some little marks off the brayer too. Okay, so I'm going to leave that one and maybe just have a look at this one here. So I think I'm going to do some, just some really fine little dots on this one. I don't know where this life will take me I just know I'm here for the ride Baby, there ain't no sense in waiting Yeah, we don't know if we got the time Oh, I'm just a country girl In a real big world You can catch me on 65 Driving to the mountain top I don't make no stops Yeah, this town was once all that I knew I'll never forget my roots I'll never forget my roots Maybe I'll end up in the city Underneath all the flashing lights Maybe I'll be in a new country But when I go to sleep at night Oh, I'm just a country girl In a real big world You can catch me on 65 Driving to the mountain top, I don't make no stops. Yeah, this town was once all that I knew. I'll never forget my roots. 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 There's nothing you can make me do. Forget my roots. Oh, I'm just a country. Girl. So I've added quite a few different marks onto this one, and it is very busy, but this is a great surface to then come back over the top 
and isolate some parts that I like and cover up some areas to bring in some quiet and some calm. So I will leave it here while the paint is wet, let it dry completely and then on another day when I'm looking for a little art burst I will probably come back with some heavier bodied paint, a different kind of tool and cover up some areas to create some space in these paintings, in particular in this one. I do really love some of this mark making here. The brayer effect just gives it that nice, organic, rough quality, while when you don't use the brayer, you get much more defined marks. And it's nice to have contrast of the two. Whenever I think about abstract painting, I just think about how can I create contrasts with different types of marks using different tools, different colors. Also size is really important. So when you have a painting that has lots of little marks like this one, it can be really powerful to come back in on a second layer and add in a nice big shape. So that's something to think about too, having big shapes and medium sized shapes and small shapes light colors, medium colors, dark colors, um, you know, hard lines, soft lines, those sorts of contrasts. So I've just put those canvases aside and I'm leaving them to dry. They definitely need more layers and more calming down. But I have some watercolor pieces that I've been working on and I wanted to share this one because I've actually been using the needle tip applicator to put down some marks on top of watercolor paint. So you don't just have to use these on an acrylic base, you can use them in all kinds of mixed media applications. So this painting is all about exploring different kinds of shapes and also looking at how paint interacts. So different areas where the shapes butt up against each other and different um, overlapping shapes so that you get interesting effects. And it's and this painting is a little bit inspired by some of the paintings that are behind me. The ones behind me are acrylic based, but I wanted to try this more abstract approach using my watercolors and bringing in some mixed media elements with pencils and what else have I got here? Mostly just pencil. So I've got some water soluble pencil and just some ordinary pencil. That might be a Neo color to crayon a few different things in this particular painting. So I've been doing these quite quickly. It's always a good way to get back into something is to just get some paintings out. So I feel like these are paintings that I just want to get out of my system. And this one in particular is very much a free flowing botanical inspired piece, but still quite abstract. And that's something that I am trying to figure out, you know, how botanical do I want my pieces to be or do I want them to lean a little bit more towards the abstract. This one here, I was also uh, experimenting with some of my new Daniel Smith luminescent paints and there are just some really nice little shimmers coming through in these sort of patterned areas. Another thing that has been getting a workout is my brayer. So I have been also using my brayer in my watercolor paintings. And you can see this really nice sort of textural effect it was created using the needle tip applicator, doing some line work and then brayering over the top and same over here. So it's really fun just to try out different supplies and use them in unconventional ways. And this one here is another quick painting. This one was exploring a different kind of color palette. I was inspired by some of the colors in my studio. I've mentioned this previously that I don't often use a lot of red and green. And this one is that mixture of abstract shapes, mark making, and some very simple botanicals, very naive kind of botanicals as well. So I like to kind of pump out a few paintings quite quickly in a session in order to learn quickly. This one here is the beginning of a simple painting of overlapping shapes. And I was using this as an opportunity to get back into watercolor and reacquaint myself with the feeling of watercolor on watercolor paper and how different that is to acrylic. And in particular, just to feel out the water to pigment ratio and get a nice consistency of paint. And so that's what I was doing. So this is almost like a, a drill or a warm up exercise. 
and I was just going through the motions and getting ready to do more watercolour work. And what I think I might do now is actually layer some more shapes and build up some overlapping areas in this one. I'm not even sure where this is heading, but it's just an opportunity to keep on practicing and using that watercolour muscle. So you can see here that I'm overlapping different shapes and trying out a variety of shades of blue and mixing in some colours to get some more muted tones. And as I was working on this piece, I was enjoying the therapeutic nature of it. But after a while, I was really craving more experimentation. So I ended up putting this piece aside and getting out another piece of watercolor paper and loosening up and trying a whole range of techniques. And this is more typical of the style that I like to work in. I absolutely love combining different supplies together. That is when I feel most creative and most excited about the artistic process. This is the main focus in my signature course, Modern Mixed Media. In that course, you'll see me using all sorts of different supplies. And if you are watching this video as it comes out, that course is now open for registration. I only open it up a couple of times a year. So if you are wanting to learn more and dive in with art making and come along on that journey with me, head to the description and I'll leave a link there. So I hope that you've enjoyed this Bits and Bobs video. I'm not quite sure yet what kind of videos I want to make for YouTube. I'm still in the early stages of figuring that out. But what I've decided to do is take the advice of my husband, Richie, who always tells me to create what I want to create and not to worry about algorithms, trends and things like that. So I thought I would leave you with that very sound advice. It's something that I feel is important to apply to art making as well, because usually the best path is the most joyful path.